Okay, thank you. Yes. So we'll quickly go through what we saw yesterday. Yeah. A quick recap, and then we will go into what we have to see today. Yeah. Okay. So quick recap we'll have. Okay. So yesterday we began with the um, introduction to this gospel study, and we saw the importance of the uh, gospels. And we saw the four signs each of the gospel writers had. Matthew is always with the uh, winged man, symbolizing he was predominantly writing to the Jewish people. For him, the humanity of Jesus tracing back to, the, to Abraham was very important. And that's why Matthew is portrayed as the winged man. And also very importantly, uh, he proje always projects Jesus as a man of humble man, a down-to-earth man. Mark's gospel, Mark is always symbolized by a winged lion, symbolizing the voice that was proclaiming, preparing the way for the Lord. Mark's audience were the Jews in Rome. So keeping them in mind, Mark wrote the gospel. Then we had Luke, who symbolized by the winged ox. Luke's audience were the Gentiles. And uh, he symbolized with an ox because he often talks about the sacrifice. And also, Luke's gospel carries a lot of importance to the poor, the downtrodden, the marginalized, symbolizing that Jesus was open to all the Gentiles. Then we had Mark and John, who was symbolized by a flying eagle. John's audience for the Church of Ephesians. Flying eagle symbolizes he sees everyone from a spiritual angle. From above, he sees everything and he writes his gospel. That's what we see. You saw that yesterday. Also, the important thing that we saw is how John writes his gospel. Keeping in mind, um, there are four important aspects of the gospel. The church always wants to read the Bible canonically. I call that canonically, we have to read it. When I say canonically, it means the entire Bible is a single unit. We have to read it as a single unit. That is, the entire message should be seen together. That is what the canonical reading of the Bible there again, we saw certain things like, in that also, there are two senses, literal senses and the um, um, spiritual sense of every scripture. In the spiritual sense, we saw three divisions, allegorical, and we also saw the moral value and anagogical. So yeah. these are the three. Yes, I'll just put it on the screen for you, just that part alone, maybe we can go to that. Okay, so um, the scripture in Irish has the literal sense and the spiritual sense. Again, in the spiritual sense, we have the allegorical. That is, allegorical means it foreshadows a future event or a people. Then we have a moral sense. It implants virtues and morality. Then we have the anagogical, which refers to the eternal things or things to come. One example we saw is the temple where the temple, a literal one, it was existing. Allegorical, Jesus says he is the temple. Moral, Paul calling us the temple of the living God, and we have to glorify God in it. And anagogical is the future temple, New Jerusalem. That's what we saw. Then we saw a brief, a brief history about John himself, that um, John wrote this gospel when he was in the island of Patmos, about 90 AD, after 90 AD. Then there are some saying that John did not die. That is because of the question Peter asked Jesus in John chapter 21, where uh, Jesus said, what is it for you if, this, if he remains till I come? So there was a theory that he didn't die. Another important aspect of that is John, there is a tomb of John in, in, the, in Ephesus. There is a tomb of John. Okay. But the problem is, um, since church was under persecution, nobody gave importance to that. But in 313 AD, when uh, Constantine ended the Christian persecution, uh, a chapel was built over the tomb. Over the tomb was built over the tomb. Mm. But later, when they opened the tomb, there was no body in it. Later, Justinian built a basilica, basilica over that. Then later, the Turks captured that and built a mosque over that. But years later, when the mosque was destroyed and they exhumed it, no body of John was ever found. Mm. One of the most interesting things is um, 
There is no relic of John anywhere in the church history. Nobody so far has claimed to have any um, relic of John. That is something that we need to keep in mind. It was never, never found there. So this is something that we saw yesterday. With that thought, we go into the uh, today's thing. My dear friends, since John's gospel, as I told you, was probably written between 90 AD and 100 AD. That is, when he was nine, about 90 AD, Paul was supposed to be being captured and put in the island of Patmos. And he died in 100 AD. So somewhere in between, all the books of John were written. That is the uh, theory of the church. Uh, biblical scholars see four sections in the Gospel of St. John. They see four sections in it. Number one is called the prologue. That appears in the first uh, chapter of John, chapter 1, 2, verses 18. That's the prologue. This is the Bible scholars see that. The second one is the book of signs. That you see from one John chapter 1, verses 19, to John chapter 12, verses 50. A lot of signs. The seven signs are mentioned there. Seven signs of John. So it's called the book of signs. Then we have the book of glory. John chapter 13 to John chapter 20. Which is nothing but the last supper and the arrest of Jesus Christ. And the passion, death and resurrection of Christ. Then finally we have the epilogue. That is John chapter 21. This is how John's gospel is divided. Four divisions. Prologue. That is 18 verses in that. Then we have the book of signs, the biggest section. The first chapter was 19 to 12th chapter end. Book of glory, that's about uh, seven chapters. Then we have the last one, epilogue, which is the chapter 21. That's what we need to keep in mind. My dear friends, before we dive into the first chapter, a few important um, pointers I want to give you regarding John's gospel. Some of the highlights of it, which we will be seeing throughout John's gospel. John's gospel has three major themes. Three major themes, you see that, constantly mentioned there. Invariably, John brings us to this connect somewhere. These three major. There could be other minor themes mentioned by John. But many of them points to this. Number one major theme you find is a new life through Christ. Constantly, John gives us a message about a new life through Jesus Christ. The second major theme he brings is the marriage of divinity and humanity. He always brings that into focus. And the third one, Jesus, the sacrificial lamb. So these three things he constantly tries to connect in almost everything that he says. Somewhere it will be connected to that major things. So when you read this gospel, when we study this gospel, Always remember, it is somewhere going to connect to one of these themes, invariably. Most of the things. If not everything, most of the things will connect to one of these things. We have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Another important thing is, when you read John's Gospel, this is something that you, I request you to keep in mind. Hmm. John has two important questions for us. What do you mean by that? He is not asking us any question. When we study this gospel, when we read this gospel, let us try to uh, answer these questions ourselves. Number one, who is Jesus? Mm. A very important thing. But when I read this, I have to find an answer to who Jesus is through the gospel of St. John. Mm. That is something very interesting. In fact, I would suggest that we take this as an exercise. Mm. Who is Jesus? From what we study, we need to find out. Mm. Number two is... What do I do with the words and teachings of Christ? Mm. That's something that we need to reflect in John's gospel because of the richness. Okay, what do I do with this stuff? Suppose he talks about, I am the light of the world. You know? mm. So what do I do with that? What is that to me? Mm. How can I apply it to me? So if we try to address these two questions, mm. then John's gospel will become meaningful for you and me. Mm. That is, I can impl no, implement it in my day-to-day -day life. Right. That idea, please keep in mind when we study this gospel. Mm. Another important aspect I have to talk to you before we go to chapter 1 is John's gospel is the seven I am statements. Mm -hmm. That's something very unique in John's gospel. We all know there are seven I am statements. Yes, Joseph? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we need to understand that also before I go into that. You know, when God called himself the I am in Exodus 3, Moses, it was a very important moment in the redemptive history. Mm. God revealed himself to his people and comes to redeem them out of exile and lead them to a new life. So that's exactly what happens when God saw the suffering of the Egyptians. Mm. God has appears to Moses in Mount Horeb in that burning bush. Mm. And he tells him, I am who I am. Right. And then he chooses and appoints and commissions Moses to lead the people of Israel out of slavery mm. into a new life. Mm. And that is the theme that we need to look at here. Mm. Now, through the seven I am statements, mm. John is also constantly trying to reveal to us mm. that Jesus is the great I am. Mm. Jesus is the great I am. In fact, Jesus, it's not John who says that. It is Jesus himself who speaks to all these things. Mm. But John highlights that. For example, in John 8, 58, okay, Jesus said this. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. He didn't say before Abraham was, I was. Mm. He said, I am. Yeah. So there's a declaration by Jesus Christ mm. that he is, I am, the great I am, God Almighty. Mm. And you see, John's gospel, the seven I am statements, mm. is more or less reflecting that. Mm. So when Jesus applies the title I am to himself, mm. he claims to be God. Mm. Not a helper, mm. not a great teacher, but the divine, eternal, pre-existent, infinite, perfect being. Mm. That's what Jesus is declaring. He is Israel's God. He is greater than Moses because he is God of Moses. Mm. He has life himself and he can give life to us. So that's why he is declaring that statement. And the seven I am statements is predominantly taken from the Old Testament and so from there, John is connecting it to showing that Jesus is that I am. I am. Mm. Let's just you know, briefly look at the seven I am. The one more line I put for you. Yeah. Uh, which is the first I am, Joe's? Any idea? Uh, wait. <sighs> okay, don't worry. We'll just go to number one. Yeah. I am the bread of life. Yeah. So you saw that in John 6, mm. it, it was briefly good in Exodus 16. Mm. Okay. Then number two, I am the light of the world. Mm. You have that in John 8. It was prefigured in Exodus 13, where God was a pillar of cloud in the daytime and the uh, um, pillar of light in the nighttime. Okay. Then we have the third I am. I am the door. Mm. John chapter 20 and Exodus 12. Now these two, one and three, we already saw. Okay. Yeah. But I'll explain all that once again I come there. Mm. Number four, I am, is the same chapter. I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10, and you find it in Ezekiel 34. Mm. Okay. Then fifth one is, the, I am the resurrection and the life. Here, um, Bible scholars and theologians have not been able to find a correct connect in the Old Testament. Mm. But generally, they believe, I am the resurrection is John 11. Generally, they believe the entire creation in Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 3. Mm. is what Jesus was referring to when I am the life and the refraction. Okay. Mm. But there is no exact connect to that. Mm. Then there is uh, number six, I am the way, the truth and the life. John 14 and Leviticus 16, where he says, this is the way you have to do this. This is what you have to do. He's showing them everything of the temple. What is to be done in the temple? Mm. That's, that's a statement. I am the truth and the life. And finally, we have the I am the true wine. Hmm. John chapter 15, hmm. uh, prefigured in Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Anyway, as we come to each of these chapters, we will be looking into it. But why I put that in the beginning is how John is connecting it. Hmm. The great I am is Jesus Christ. And that I am is everything that he promised in the Old Testament to be hmm. is fulfilled in Jesus Christ as the great I am. Right. So that's another theme of John's gospel. So we have four things in mind now. Number one, new life. Yeah. Number two, marriage. Mm. Number three, sacrificial lamb. And number four, the great I am. Mm. These four connects we need to have when we study John's gospel. 
Hmm. With that, we go to uh, chapter one. Yeah, just say, just say it again, um, Raghu. Uh, first one is the uh, new life. New life. New exactly. life. He always connects everything to new life. Right. New life in Christ. Okay. Hmm. He's showing everything as new from Christ. Correct. Number two, he always tries to bring that marriage into our marriage. Home. Yeah. Marriage of heaven and earth, divinity and humanity. And the third thing he always brings it be the sacrificial lamb, Jesus. Hmm. And the fourth thing is the uh, I, yeah. great I am. Hmm. Where it shows that every promise that Yahweh gave in, the, gave in the Old Testament that he would be is now fulfilled in Christ. Okay. Yeah. So these four things you constantly see in John's gospel. Hmm. So when you see all of you, keep this in mind. Okay. Constantly keep this in mind. This will run throughout John's gospel. Yeah. Until, till, of course, till the time he comes to that last supper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At least in the first 12 chapters, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Now we go to chapter one today. We begin with chapter one. Yeah. So chapter one deals with the prologue and the call of disciples. Two sections. Okay. Yeah. First is the prologue, and second is the call of the disciples. Okay. Uh, chapter two to four deals with signs. Okay. Mm. I'm just giving you the overall this thing now. Yeah, yeah. Chapter five deals with the divinity of Jesus Christ and him being equal to the Father. Okay? Yeah. Just the heading of each chapter I'm giving. Mm. What it symbolizes generally. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Chapter 2 to 4 is only the signs you see there. Chapter 5, it reveals the divinity of Jesus Christ mm. and how he and the Father are one. one. That's the main theme in chapter 5. Chapter 6 revolves around the feast of the Passover. Mm. Then chapter 7 and chapter 2, chapter 10 revolves around the feast of the tabernacles or the, we call it tabernacles, booths or the festival of lights. They call it differently. Okay. Mm. And the mission of the nations, mm. mission of the nations. That's what it covers there. Mm. Then chapter 11 to 12 talks about his mission, Jesus' mission. Okay. Mm. Then chapter 13 to 20 is about his passion and death. Yeah. And chapter 21 deals with the mission of the church. Right. So these are the headings you will be having. Okay. Mm. You want me to go through it once again? No, no, no. This is fine. As we go, we will get an idea of... Uh, yes, yes. That also will get it. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, chapter 1 can be divided into three parts. Okay. Now we are starting chapter 1. Yeah. One to, chapter 1, 1 to 18 is the prologue. Mm. Okay. Mm. 19 to 42 is about John the Baptist. Mm. Then 43 to 51, call of Nathaniel. Mm. So these are the three things in John chapter 1. Mm. Okay? Clear? Yeah. Okay, fine. So let's begin with the first one now. Yeah. John chapter 1 was 1 to 5 will be here. Okay? Yeah. yeah. In the, we'll read the entire word of God, then we'll go into it. Yeah. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, mm. and the word was God. Mm. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So, my dear friends, John begins his gospel by saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. Now, Joes, anything coming to your mind? Yeah, for me, this particular line, uh, first line has uh, been, uh, you know, constantly ringing in my mind, uh, you know, in, in the, especially in, I told you also a couple of times, you know, this word, I, I uh, for me, this was, a, this was a, a big revelation for me because I never, I always have read it uh, and left it. But then when I started meditating upon this particular word, that beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with the God and word was God, uh, was uh, a complete, uh, you know, uh, transformation for me. And the way I looked, I used to look at the word completely changed for after I got a little bit of an understanding of this particular word. So that is how I was. So I was very excited when you said that we are starting with, uh, we will start with the gospel of John. And this is where I wanted actually to listen uh, from you on how you would, uh, you know, uh, take uh, this particular uh, passage and Give that understanding. Okay, fine. Now, now, Joe's, yes, just keep hold that for a moment. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, more importantly, what happened, we see a reminiscence of the yeah. first creation in Genesis. Correct. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. So now look at this. What am I trying to do? John trying to tell us here. Yes. Okay? Yes, apart from what you said, which is very important. You know, John chapter 1 begins, in the beginning was the word. Genesis 1 begins, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. So now what is John trying to tell us? Yeah, John is trying to tell that uh, it was, uh, it, you know, it was through this word that uh, everything else uh, was created by the word that he spoke. Yes, that we see in Genesis itself. Okay. Correct. Correct. God spoke a word. What John is trying to tell us is, now he says, in the beginning was the word, what he says is now, it's a new beginning, new life with Jesus Christ. Hmm. He begins the gospel with the first theme I told you. Hmm. So when he says, in the beginning was the word, now he's beginning to make us understand, now Jesus is now going to start a new creation. Hmm. So that's a very important message there he gives John. Mm. In the beginning, when God created the world, oil, okay, when the wind from God was over the waters, then God said, let there be light. Okay? Mm. And God saw the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. That's what Genesis says. Now, when you go back to John, in the beginning was the word. So he's again beginning a new creation now. Mm. From that word, God is going to bring a new creation through Christ. So that is how he begins his gospel. So is, he not, is he not bringing the Genesis uh, uh, you know, story here? Is he... Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So he's starting a new creation here. Hmm. Absolutely. That's all I'm trying to tell. Hmm. Absolutely bring the Genesis story here by making us understand. Yeah. Now with the birth of Jesus Christ, yeah. everything is now going to become a new. Hmm. It's going to be a new life for us, a new creation. Till that moment, man was a, in the grip of original sin. Yeah. Now he's saying, look at this. All things came into being through him and without him, not one thing came into being. What is he saying that? He says, now everybody is going to become a new creation only through Jesus Christ. Mm. That's the strong message he's opening with. Mm. Very clear, you know, that's what he's hitting us with a strong opening, opening message. Very strong message. Straight away, you know, it's like the T20 cricket match. First ball is a sixer. <laughs> yeah. He wants us to be very clear. He's already igniting the uh, study for us here. Yeah. Also, very importantly, he brings two things here. You know, life and light. Look at that. Life two and things light. Okay. Life and light. He brings in there. Okay. Was in him was life and the life was the light of all people. So he's bringing those two things into right. Remember, uh, earth was a formless void. Then God breathed life. He said, let there be light. He Creation is coming into existence. Light and darkness was separated. Here he says, the darkness did not overcome it. So what is he saying just now? Earlier in the Genesis creation, we saw God separating light and darkness. Okay? Correct. Now he says something different. He says, and the darkness did not overcome it. Mm. I'll tell you, okay, that's what we are learning here. Okay, that's why I said we have to go a little deep in certain parts of John's gospel, not everything. Certain things are very plain and clear. Okay, mm. now what he says is now he's not separating it, he says the darkness will not overcome it. Mm. That is, Joe's, you and I have to live in darkness because we are in the world. Mm. But if we become a new creation in Christ, mm. you know, darkness cannot do anything to you and me. Yeah, I think in, that is why in, in, his, in his prayer also, he prays that do not take them from the world. Yes. Keep them, uh, you know, in your uh, yeah. protection. Right? Yeah, that's what They have to be in the world. We have to be in the world. In the world. But we'll yeah. be protected in the world. Yeah. Mm. That's true, very true. That's a priestly prayer of Jesus Christ. Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. Now we come to that much later. Yeah. But yes, that's exactly the message he's beginning with. Mm. Yeah. So beautifully it begins. So see, what I'm trying to know, in between these lines, five verses, mm. it may look very simple. Mm. But look at the message he has conveyed right away here. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's wrapped up the salvation story here. Mm. 
in five verses he's brought the entire salvation story here yes that's the beauty of john's gospel you know we can see it in many angles mm. so are you clear with these five verses now yes no questions here no then we'll move forward we'll move forward so when <coughs> so here uh, the word uh, when uh, john talks about the word he's referring to jesus here yes right? yes uh, remember uh, in this context is it the same context that we see also in genesis when god spoke the word is that word also uh, related to jesus yes yes in the beginning was the word he says the mm. word was with god and the word was god that means what everything is one word god yes. jesus are all one okay okay just to give an example of that can you also read verses 14 there john chapter 1 verse 14 let's complete it okay let's read verses 1 and 14 together 1 and 14 yeah one and says in the okay yeah. four points here those let's take it this way yeah. in the beginning was the word number word. one okay uh, yeah number two word was with god okay yeah, yeah. number three word was god okay mm. now you read verses 14 yeah, john and, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us who was that who became flesh and lived with us uh, word became flesh now, who was that jesus, jesus. okay yeah. now let's stay now and, look at this in yeah. the beginning was the word word okay yeah the word was with god the word was god the word became Bless. jesus so, yeah we so what do we conclude by this jos what do we conclude yeah god word jesus are all one one right one right clear right god word jesus are all one, one. remember in this context only mm. maybe we'll read that also since you brought this point let's take two word of god 1 john chapter 1 verse 1 1 john 1 1 1 all one 1 john 1 1 john 1 first letter of saint john chapter 1 verse 1 that which was from the beginning uh, what was in the beginning just now that which was from the beginning what was in the beginning the, the word word okay continue okay uh, the word which was from the beginning which we have heard which ah so you hear the word no yeah ah go ahead. Which, uh, which we have seen with our eyes ah. which we have looked upon ah. and touched with our hands ah. concerning the word of life look at this now jos let's hold you for a minute he says um, what was from the beginning mm. now we know what was in the beginning the word okay right, right. what we have seen with our eyes mm. so whom did john see with his eyes jesus jesus Right. Whom we have touched, Jesus. Whom did he touch, Jesus? Whom we have looked upon, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Whom we have then what? One more thing he says. What is that? Whom we have um, heard, uh, touched. Uh, we have seen, looked upon, touched, and heard. Uh, seen, touched. Okay, all these things. Yeah. So we know he saw Jesus Christ. He heard Jesus Christ. He touched Jesus Christ. But he concludes by saying concerning the word of God. Correct. That means after his heavenly vision, John understood that this Jesus whom he touched, mm. whom he saw, whom he heard was nothing but the word of God. Mm. Get it? Yeah. One more we will read now. Revelation chapter 19 was 11 onwards. Revelation 19, 11 onwards. 19, 11. <laughs> I have not put it on the screen because it yeah. came from your question. So I have not put it there. Then I saw, uh, then I saw heaven opened, mm. and behold, a white horse. Mm. He who sat upon it called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Mm. His eyes are like flame of fire, mm. and on his head are many diadems. Mm. And he has a name inscribed which no one knows but himself. Mm. He is clad in a, in a robe dipped in blood. Mm. And the name by which he is called the word of God. Oh, that's enough. Yeah. You understand? So he has a name which nobody knows. Mm. But everyone in heaven is calling what? Word of God. Mm. Word of God. He is just on the throne of judgment. Mm. Okay, who sits in the door of judgment? God. God. He clothed the robe dipped in blood. 
That's the sacrifice of Christ. So John is saying again, in heaven, God, Jesus and word are all united as one. Hmm. So, is it a, can we also uh, conclude that uh, the it is a synonym? This is hero. It's a synonym for Jesus. Word of God is a synonym for Jesus. Yes, we can do that. We can conclude that also. But Jesus is only for that thirty-three years. 33 okay. Years. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's how it's called. That name is this for the human form. Uh -huh. I think, uh, Joseph, yeah. I think you need to mute Rose. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll mute. I will, yeah. Fine, I'll thank you. Yeah, fine. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So that's it. So Jesus is the same. Okay. Now, the, his earthly life, when he became flesh, he's called as Jesus. Okay. But it's all the same. God, Jesus, word of God. It's connecting. In heaven, he's saying, God, the one clothed in the robe of red, that is the sacrifice of Christ and the word of, he's saying everything together. Mm, right. That means all one. And that was in the beginning, he says. Yeah. That's what he said. So it says in Genesis, says in the beginning, when God created the world, mm. he spoke the word and the spirit of over it. So God, word, and spirit. Okay. Yeah. In fact, Trinity is there. Trinity. Yeah. In fact, this particular word, that is that, you know, that first verse, no, in this John 1 1, mm. if you really meditate deeper, you will understand that you will actually experience the depth of uh, what entire bible if you really look at that is what i was uh, sharing with you you know the word that you hear is if you really connect that as jesus right mm -hmm. the word that you speak or that you say and you read and you hear it is all uh, jesus if you really look yes, at absolutely yeah absolutely and, right. and we many times at least a lot of us understand uh, word separately jesus separately but both are the same that's correct. That's exactly what I'm making. That's yeah. why in, uh, when you read uh, Psalms 107, 20 also, he says, he sent out his word and healed them, healed them. and delivered ah. them from destruction. Okay. Ah. Uh, and when you say Psalms 3, 8 says, there's deliverance in the name of Jesus, you know, God. Hmm. Huh? And Jesus also says, by the words I have spoken. So hmm. which means it is it is uh, not just the word that the way we speak, but hmm. it is the it is God himself getting and doing the work, right? Yes. Yes. For example, when you look at the healing of the centurion in Luke mm. 8 or Matthew 7, mm. the centurion servant was at home. You know, he said, Lord, speak a word and my servant will be healed. Ah. But the servant healed? Servant was healed, yeah. Why, Jos? Because Jesus going, yeah. his word going is the same. Same, correct, correct. Because correct. Jesus and his word are one and the same. Correct, correct. In fact, and, yeah. Today, that's yeah. why, in John 6, 63, Jesus said, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and truth. Okay. In, in fact, I just wanted to share one, uh, one small experience, uh, so some example which I heard today. So it was a man who gave a job to a murderer who was released uh, after his jail term. Nobody was willing to take uh, that man. And uh, this man got into his company and he refuses to work. Till mm -hmm. he got into the company, he was very nice. But after he got into the company, he refuses to work. Mm -hmm. So people started complaining and all these things. But uh, since he was a well-built guy, he was threatening everyone. So finally, it came into the manager. Manager said, uh, if you don't work, I will uh, dismiss you. Mm -hmm. He said, you can't. I have already murdered somebody. One more murder will not help. It will not make any difference to me. <laughs> and he was actually looking forward for an opportunity to you know, kill this manager. Uh -huh. So one day it happened that he got into his room mm. and it was not uh, bolted. He went, came inside and he bolted and mm. he had uh, his knife uh, with him. He is literally you know, trying to kill. Suddenly this manager, manager is a very spiritual guy and he used to write the word of God and put it uh, on his cabin. You know, mm. And one word uh, which came to him was, when God is with us, who can be against uh, me? When mm. God is with me, who can be against me? Suddenly, he felt, uh, you know, uh, very strong inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he started uh, declaring this word uh, loudly. When God is with me, who can be against me? Mm. Till then, this man was threatening him with a knife. He suddenly fell down and started crying. And after a few minutes, he said, what happened? Somebody came and, uh, you know, uh, in what happened to me? What happened to me after, you know? For a few minutes, he realized that he was in uh, not in the same 
position mm. he was i was i was just thinking when mm. the word of god was spoken at that time mm. it is uh, it is you know jesus coming directly at that time and handling the situation i'm just trying to visualize that and this is the power in which each time when we pronounce the word written word of god this is what exactly happens in our own lives also okay one more example i'll give you joseph okay just yeah. an example um let's say um beginning mm. yeah end mm. and tomorrow mm. how many words did i speak now three three words you're clear yeah very sure no yeah okay what is this called so it's a it's a bible what okay, what is it called the beginning no 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 uh, i take give an example uh, you said uh, i spoke three words okay that's right. just, just random words that's all don't worry yeah, yeah yeah what is this that is the bible so what do we call it as word of god can you come back again the word of god the uh, jose uh, when i said three beginning end and tomorrow uh, you said i spoke three words right there are so many things in this why are you calling word of god why don't you call it words of god Ah, that is a point. Yeah, that Because means what? These are not what God, God spoke. Correct. This is God Himself. Self, yeah, that's a beautiful. Singular word correct. of God. God. You get it? The correct. entire Bible is one Jesus Christ. Correct. Beautiful. Beautiful explanation. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Because I say it's words. Yeah. Yeah. It is not the words. It is the word. Uh, now this is the so many things are there but we call it word of god one single unit called jesus christ mm. and that's what john is telling him mm. then he talks about the light and darkness mm. he says how when that word is in me mm. he says darkness will not leave but darkness will not overcome me mm. darkness is there around me mm. one more example i'll go doesn't matter if we stick here only today doesn't matter okay yeah 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 now in the mountain of temptation mm. satan is coming and tempting jesus christ correct what did he tell him no if you're son of god you change the stones into bread yeah. okay as the story is history behind that we will not go into that now jesus says it is written one shall not run by bread alone but by every word of god word of god yeah. now satan what did he use now He, used he started word. using the word of God. Huh? Yeah. Jump from here because it is written. He'll give changes charge over you. Yeah. Jesus said, "You should." It is written. You shall not. What is he saying? Hey, devil! You are using the word of God. Yeah. But I am the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> Different. You yeah. are using the word of God, but I am the word of God. Word Checkmate. Of God. You're over. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. We need to understand what happens there. Yeah. Satan was using the word of God, but Jesus is the word of God. Mm. So he says, "You are using me to defeat me. How can it be possible?" Mm. See, that's how we have to look into it spiritually. The word, the word, mm. Jesus Himself. In every aspect, it is Jesus Himself. Yeah. When I read the word of God, God is speaking to me. Mm. The written word is called Logos. Mm. The speaking word is called Rema. Rema. God speaking His word to us. It's yeah. very important, mm. and this is what light and darkness. The word is light. Jesus said, "I am the light of the world." Mm. That's what Paul says here: light and life and darkness. Look at this. How he's putting it. Light mm. he's putting, darkness mm. he's putting. In between he's putting life. Mm. You walk into the light, you have life. Mm. Darkness cannot follow you. Mm. For the darkness, uh, for for the light, light shines in the darkness. darkness. That is what. That is you know we are living. in the darkness can you also read 1 john 5:19 let's let's look at that also 1 john 5:19 we know that we are of god and the whole world is in the power of the evil one ah uh, just the whole world lies under the power of the evil one so where are we living jews we are living in the darkness in the darkness but who is inside of you inside of me is jesus the, the word jesus okay that's why he says the light shines in the darkness mm. you and i are light shining in the darkness mm. and the darkness cannot touch you if mm. that word is in you mm. that light called jesus is in you mm. 
Right. Because you are a new creation now. Mm. Where darkness cannot touch you. Mm. Clear? Right. That's the theme he begins here with. Okay? Let's move on now. So these are what we see the remnants of the creation history here. Yeah. John speaks about creation and a new creation through word, word Jesus Christ. Okay? Very important. He talks about creation and a new creation through the word that is Jesus Christ. Mm. John 1, 3. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. Mm. Very important. Yeah. In the creation history itself, how was everything created? Mm. God just spoke a word. Let there be light. And there was light. Mm. Let the doom appear. The doom appeared. Yes? Mm. So he says everything was created through that word. That means the word has a creative power. Mm. Every time I read the word of God, every time I listen to the word of God, the same creative power is working in you and me. Mm. How important is it? Right. You may wonder why we need that creative power in us. Mm. Why do you need that? Okay, right. I'll give a small example here. Yeah. Um, do you agree with me that every day we are destroyed by sin, temptation? Yes. Okay, all of us. I think even if you don't agree, that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John 10, 10. We all know this famous word of God. Yes? Yes. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and, kill, kill. and destroy. That's right. That means, Joes, every day Satan is trying to steal, kill and destroy you and me. Right. Every one of us. That's the truth. Yeah. Through sin and temptation. Yes? Yeah. But if, if he keeps on stealing and destroying you, one fine day you and I will be completely destroyed. Yes? Correct. Correct. But as I start reading the word of God, mm. or receiving the word of God, reading means receiving it into us. Okay? Yeah. Now the word has a creative power. Yes? Yes. All things came into being through him. Yeah? yeah? yeah. So something that opposes the destruction of darkness is now working in me if the word is in me. Mm. A power that negates the destruction. Mm. That's why I said the mm. word is a spiritual food too. Correct, correct. And not only that, uh, that is one is it negates. Secondly, uh, if you continue to add, continue to read and take the word into your life, whatever is destroyed in the past can, can also be recreated by the word. Not only that, much more. That's why, you know, John 10, 10 completes. Yeah. I came so that they may have life yeah. and life in abundance. Abundance, yeah. Correct. I came. Abundance. Who came? That word came. came. Yeah. Light came. That's why John says a new creation has come. Mm. Get the my point? Creative power, yeah. The creative power is uh, very, very important yes. for us. Yes. And yeah. So Even that more, actually, that if you understand this, that actually takes us deeper, and uh, we, you know, I, 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 you know, remember what uh, Brother Johnson had uh, explained. So mm -hmm. he says, uh, you know, sometimes he take uh, one verse, one line, or one one paragraph, mm -hmm. and spend, uh, you know, a couple of days, couple of weeks, just meditating on that particular word. Mm -hmm. So that it becomes this, it becomes really you know uh, ingrained into your life. So that word, once you have that, once we do that in our, in our day to day life, we can actually what as the word says, John ten, your life become in in abundance in you. That word becomes you know start overflowing uh, with the power which uh, which it has or it comes with. Okay, right. Joe's very correct here, but one point we need to be cautious about is hmm. it is not just meditating and implanting the word. Yeah. Uh, can you read uh, James chapter 1, verse 21 and 22? Yeah, James. A, uh, chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 to get a better idea about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Much more deeper idea about it. Yeah. James 1, 21 and 22. 21, 22. Yeah, therefore, put away all filthiness and rank growth of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Number one, he says, hmm. word that is implanted in you. Okay, hmm. Hmm. then continue, Jews. But, but be the doers of the word and not just the hearers deceiving ah, yourself. That is very important. Okay, yes, yes. when I meditate, meditate. 
I should act according to that word. Correct. That's very important. Yeah. So if there a true, three, true meditation, actually, if you're really truly meditating, that you will not be sitting quiet. Yes, you yeah, will you act will according to it. Quiet. That's the thing. Should so yeah. it can be that I can just hear the word of God. Ah. Or yeah. I can receive it inside of me. Yeah. I may not act out of it. So Correct. when I do this, finally, that's when the completion is there. Mm. Right. Right. Hear, implant, and act. Act. Three things: hear, implant, and act. Right. Right. Then it completes it. Okay. Yeah. So that should finally everything should lead us to living that word of God because we are a new creation in Christ. Correct. In Christ. That's very important. We are a new creation in Christ. Remember, Paul says. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, mm. anybody is in Christ, there's a new creation. Mm. Everything old has passed away. That's heavy, yeah. Very important. So that is it. I'm acting like Christ. Mm. You know, Paul also says this in Colossians 1, 15 and 16. He says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and visible, whether thrones, dominions or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Mm. We are created by Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ. Mm. I am created by the word for the word. I am created by the light for the light. For the light. That's why the light should shine in the darkness. Mm. When, you say, said, when you say for the light, for Jesus, what, yeah. what would be... You know. That is, I am the living Jesus now. I am a new creation in Christ. That's what. See, what God wants to accomplish through Christ has to be accomplished through you and me today. Hmm. That is, God is accomplishing his purpose in this world through you and me. Hmm. That's what we are, another Christ here. Hmm. That's what means for Christ, for the light, created for the light. I am called to reflect only Jesus Christ. Paul says, no, uh, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I think it is Romans 13, 11, I think. Can you read that? Ephesians 5, 1 and Romans 13, 11, I think. Both we can read. Ephesians? 5, 1, first part of it. Therefore, be imitators of God, no? Yeah, and therefore, be imitators of God as okay. delivered children. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's one. Can you read Romans 13, 11, if I'm right? Besides this, you know that you know what hour it is, mm. how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep. Mm. For salvation is nearer to us now mm. than when we first believed. Mm. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Mm. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Ah, now look at this. What verse is that? 14, no? 12, 12. 12. Put on the armor of light. Right, right, yeah. Put on Jesus Christ. Hmm. In, in, in another three times, it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it says. Um, yeah. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In the NRSV version, it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it says. Yeah. So that's what we have made for the light. Hmm. For Paul says here. Clear? Hmm. Clear? Okay. Now, John 1, 6 to 8. Okay. There was some man sent from God. Hmm. Okay. Um, Jos, I may have to stop here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me finish this point. Yeah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Mm. He came as a witness to testify to the light mm. so that all may believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Mm. So John came witnessing to the light. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, okay. if I go into this, it will take some time. Yeah. So what should we do, Jos? We will stop uh, now. Yeah, yeah. Now, chapter... so, so then I have to talk about John and go a little deeper. Yeah. Okay. So I will stop here for the time being because yeah. I need to join another session at 6.30. Mm -hmm. So I think we got the first point correct. Yeah. Am I right? Once, yeah, 1 to 5 we have covered. Uh, 1 to 5. Now 6 yeah. to we will stay yeah. take tomorrow. Yeah, certain things will not take such a long time. Okay. Yeah. Certain yeah. passage we can just brush through also. Yeah. And certain things we may even overlook also. Certain things which is in relevant. Yeah, which yeah. is only a connect between these two. Yeah. So the first thing was important because the new creation is beginning. John yeah. is focusing on the new creation now. Through Christ, a new creation is coming in. And he says, we belong to the new creation. And when we belong to the new creation, 
darkness has not can not do nothing to you and me okay yeah. that's a message there yeah so friends uh, we will stop uh, now uh, today and tomorrow we will again start little early uh, so request you to join maybe around 5:15 so uh, we didn't uh, have uh, in, we didn't give you enough notice only for tomorrow so we will also start early uh, to stop uh, certain days jos you will inform yeah. them yeah, okay, yeah. Days. and these videos are uploaded on the youtube in case if you do not have the subscription link please send me a whatsapp message uh, i can send you the link my number is there on the screen okay uh, we can now uh, conclude uh, with a prayer uh, ragu yes okay any questions on this i will take it tomorrow okay right yeah not a problem heavenly father we thank you for giving us this grace and time to understand that we belong to a new creation through you you are the eternal word lord in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god today you have given us the grace to commune with the word and allow the word to be implanted in our heart so that we may be transformed to the image and likeness of your son continue to shower your grace upon us continue to give us the grace to open our hearts and receive your word let every word be implanted in our hearts and finally let us be doers of the word of god and not merely listeners heavenly father we make this prayer in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. father spirit. and of the son and of the holy spirit amen amen god bless you and yeah. thank god you bless. thank you and, and we meet uh, tomorrow little early yeah tomorrow, tomorrow little early we will uh, start at around 5:15 5:20 so request you to please uh, pass on the message only for tomorrow otherwise uh, we will normally start at 5:30 yes god bless you have a okay, beautiful bye, day bye thank you brothers bye. thank you god bless god bless bye bye